From Crunch Econometrics, I will show you how to perform stationary two tests using the augmented Dickey Fuller procedure. My eViews is already launched and I have my two variables which I'll be using for this analysis. I have the log of personal consumption expenditure and the log of personal disposable income here as a group data. Before I subject these two tests to the scientific testing of the augmented Dickey Fuller, I need to first plot them on a series to observe their nature. So I double click on them. I go to view, graph, and I click line and symbol. Okay. So looking at the nature of the two graphs, they are both trending upward and that's an indication that both series are non-stationary. Another way to know whether my series are non-stationary is to perform the regression of log PCE on log PDI and observe the value of my R squared and W Watson. So I double click on both variables again. I go to quick and I click estimate equation. I type in my dependent variable which is log PCE C, which is the constant, and log PDI, which is the explanatory variable. I click OK. The rule of thumb is that if the R squared is greater than W Watson statistic, it's an evidence that you have just performed a spurious regression. And let's look at my R squared is 0.994, and my W Watson is 0 0.570. So this is a clear indication that this regression is spurious and it's spurious because both series are non-stationary and one of the disadvantages of a spurious regression is that the outcome or the results cannot be used for prediction or forecasting or hypothesis testing the outcome of a spurious regression is basically useless having observed the plot of the two graphs and looking at the outcome of this uh, regression, I need to subject these two variables to the augmented Dickey Fuller testing. So the next thing to do is to click on the first one, the log of per capita expenditure. I click on view, and the unit root test dialog box opens up. So first thing is that I'm going to test in level. So this one remains the way it is for level. And from what I've seen, when I plotted the graph, I will start with an intercept. I will allow AIC to choose the maximum lag length from what I have here. I manually inputted eight, but I know that AIC will choose the optimal lag length from this eight. I click OK. So here I have my results for the augmented Dickey Fuller test using the levels form and selecting the intercept option. The output you are seeing on the screen are in two parts. The upper part is the unit root test itself, outcome of the unit root test, and the lower part is a regression from the unit root test. Because I included an intercept in my specification, if you look at the intercept here, the coefficient is 0 0.5 and is statistically not significant. Again, out of the choice of maximum of 8 lags, AIC used 3 lags of the dependent variable, which is also here, 3 lags. But the most important outcome is in the upper part of the table where we have the null hypothesis as the log of PCE has a unit root. The augmented test, the ADF test statistic is negative 1.478. And because we only consider the absolute value, by absolute value, we don't consider the negative signs. And if the absolute value is lower than the critical value, I cannot reject the null hypothesis that this series indeed has a unit root. So from this test outcome, I cannot reject the null hypothesis. So I click on view again, 
I go to unit truth. Now let me select trend and intercepts. I leave every other thing the way they are and I click OK. Selecting the trend and intercept, let's look at the lower part of the table, the regression output. So here, the constant term is significant. The trend term is significant. Even though we are not considering the p-values in this regression, we are only using the p-values here. But this is just to let you know that um, the trend and the constant terms are significant. Again, the most important part of this output is on the upper part of the table where we have the null hypothesis as in log of PC has a unit root. From here, we can see that the ADF statistic is negative 3.29. And because I'm basing my significance level at 5%, I still cannot reject the null hypothesis in this case, even though it is weakly significant at 10%. But I'm re I cannot reject the null hypothesis that the log of PC has a unit root at 5% level. So in this case, I cannot reject the null hypothesis. So having confirmed that in level, PCE is non-stationary, let me now take the first difference. I click on intercept for the first difference. I leave Akaike with a maximum of 8 lags and I click OK. Now I have the output again. In the upper part of my table is the most important part. Where I see I have my null hypothesis now as the difference of the log of PCE having a unit root. And my ADF test statistic is negative 3.28. And if you are to look at the absolute value, it's higher than the 5% critical value. So looking at what I have here, I have to reject the null hypothesis that the, the difference of LNPC has a unit root. So by rejecting the null hypothesis, I can say that now the series is stationary. Now let me test again using trend and uh, intercept. So I click on this one and I click OK, still using the first difference. Now looking at the trend and intercept, the null hypothesis remains the same. The ADF test statistics is 3.458, slightly lower than my 5% critical value at 3.64. So by including um, constant and trend, I cannot reject the null hypothesis that is still not that it is still not stationary at first difference. So that means the outcome of this test is that the log of PCE is stationary only with a constant, not with a constant and trend. So that would be the outcome of this series. So I have tested using uh, intercept and trend. I have tested using only the intercept. With the intercept, I reject the null hypothesis that it is not stationary. By including the trend and the intercept, I cannot reject the null hypothesis. The next thing I would do is to plot the series of the differenced log of per capita expenditure and look at the trend. Now let's look at the series, the differenced series and see. Now this is the differenced log of per capita expenditure. So we can see here that it's stationary. It revolves around the mean of 0 0.0001. If I'm to draw a trend line straight horizontally from point zero zero one, we can see that the series exhibits a mean reversion around point zero zero one. So the log difference, um, log of per capita expenditure is stationary at first difference. So having said all that, it's important for me to run you through some things that you need to know when conducting stationarity tests in AVUs. If you're using a time series data, it's essential you test for stationarity. A stationary series simply means it, is, it has a constant mean, a constant variance, and a constant covariance. In other words, that series is time invariant. However, if that is not the case, then the series is non-stationary. Also, in time series analysis, 
You can use the word non-stationary. You can use unit truth on random work. They are all synonyms. Also, when you regress two series together, you get what we call a spurious regression. How do you know that you have a spurious regression when the value of your R squared is greater than your W Watson statistics? It's a confirmation. You can plot the series on the graph to, to visualize the trend. Then go ahead to perform your stationarity test by differencing the variable. Several tests are bound. We have the augmented Dickey Fuller, the Phyllis Peron, the DFGLS, and so on and so forth. The null hypothesis is always that the series has a unit truth. Reject the null hypothesis if the absolute value of the computed tau statistic exceeds the interpolated critical value of Dickey and Fuller or McKinnon. The preferred benchmark for signals level is 5% compared to either 10 or 1%. The difference between the ADF test and the DF test is that the augmented Dickey Fuller added the lagged difference of the dependent variable to take care of possible serial correlation in the error terms. And lastly, always plot the graph of the different series to visualize its nature. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more videos from Crunch Econometrics.